Hey guys, it's Jen, and I am here with a little bit of a different video for my channel. Um, I, I have, t let's just get into a little chat here for one second. Um, in June, my dad passed away, which was weird and hard and unexpected and made even stranger because of COVID and all of that kind of thing. And since then, I have taken a little bit of a step back from um, creating my usual crafty things, which are scrapbook layouts and cards and stuff like that. Um, and I've gotten really into resin. Now, I'm still um, making scrapbook layouts and stuff, and I will continue to do that, and I'm starting to get back into it again now. But um, I also started working full-time, so just a lot of things happened at once. But I have been obsessed with resin, and I've posted a few things on my Instagram, and a lot of you told me that you wanted to learn how to do um, resin. And so I thought today I would show you. These are some coasters that I, I posted one that I made for my desk at work for the holidays and I offered to give three of them away. And so these are two that I've made so far and I thought I would make the third one with you on camera so that you can see how I made these. And um, I've got all of the supplies that I'm going to use out here. And I, so I thought I would kind of start by telling you what I'm using, um, the things that you need to get started with resin. It seems more tricky than it actually is. Um, and I have fallen in deep love with it. Um, and coasters are super fun. I think I want to make one for every holiday. It's just fun to switch it up and it makes me happy when I'm sitting at my desk to have my cup sitting on here. So... Um, anyway, this is what we're going to make today. I have a coaster mold. This is from American Crafts Color Pour line. And um, this is just the round coaster. This particular mold comes with three different kinds. It comes with the hexagon, the circle, and a square. But I'm going to make another circle one today. And I am using also these really cute little mix-ins. They're called Sprinklets from Buttons Galore and More. May Flom actually sent these to me, so shout out to May for sending me those. But um, this one has like little Santas and red and green, and this one has little um, gingerbread men with some peppermint, and these are super cute. American Crafts also has one that I think it might be exclusive to Joanne, but I'm not sure, that has peppermints with like little red and white sprinkles that's super cute too, if you um, wanna try that one. I'm also using some iridescent glitter. This is ultra fine art glitter. Uh, I think it's called Fossil. I've had this in my stash forever. Glitter is the bane of crafter's existence until you get into resin and then you absolutely love it because it makes your pieces so sparkly and pretty. Look at that shine. I am obsessed. And it's trapped in here so it's never going to come out, which is the best of both worlds. Am I right? So we have um, the glitter and then I also have these little stars. They're gold stars. These are also from American Crafts. And I'll link to everything that I can find in the description below. So those are the things we're going to mix in. Um, we're also going to use some dyes to mix in. I have red, I have gold, and I have some white. This is white from Pinata that I keep in this bottle because I like the fine applicator. The bottle it comes in does not have a fine applicator tip, and so I keep mine in a fine line bottle. Um, but I will link to that as well. Um, I like to have some toothpicks on hand. I'm using some paper cups to mix in. I have this larger cup to mix my resin in, but the smaller cups I'll use to mix the different colors. Um, this is a, everywhere I can, I try to use silicone because it's reusable. So after I use this cup and the resin hardens, I can just peel it out of here. Uh, I'm also using, you can use craft sticks. I have some reusable silicone covered sticks that I I've just gotten and have loved using. So that's what I'm going to use, but you can also just use regular craft sticks. And then I have some tweezers. And last but not least, oh, gloves. You have to have gloves. You want to protect yourself while you're working with resin. It is chemical. You need to work in a well-ventilated area. You have got to, if you're doing a lot of resin, I would definitely suggest wearing a mask. I wear a mask, um, when I'm doing a lot of resin. And I would have multiple pairs of gloves on hand because I like to switch mine out if they get too sticky. Um, the resin 
is sticky until it cures and you do not want it on your hands. A chemical reaction uh, happens and it, get, it heats up and hardens um, and it will irritate your skin. So if you get any on your skin, wash your hands right away. Um, you can use some rubbing alcohol to, get, to help get that off. I have some in this little bottle here. And I, you can kind of see off to the side, there's this Lazy Susan. I like to keep all of the things that I might need on this little tray. You can see gloves, you can see all sorts of different little like cups and scissors, just all the stuff that I might need, I like to keep on this tray. So all of this stuff will probably go back onto this tray. Um, and then I also have these little letters, which are from Tim Holtz from a few years back. I just have them in this baggie. This is what I'm going to use to spell out a word for the center of the, of the coaster. <laughs> and then I actually just got this. It is a sweet sugar bell little, it's for cookie decorating, but it's a little tiny spinning Lazy Susan, and I thought it would be nice to have in the coaster in case I wanted to turn it as I'm working, rather than, um, sometimes you can't see on the side when you're pouring, so I thought that would be nice. You know, it's not necessary, definitely not necessary, but I do recommend putting something down on your work surface. You, you need to do this. You can do a Teflon coated mat, you can do, um, a garbage bag, you can do wax paper or parchment paper, you can do... Um, like I, when I work upstairs in my kitchen, I like to put one of those dollar store, uh, plastic tablecloths on my table and I use that as well. Um, so definitely take the proper precautions before you start. That is very important. Um, and be ready to get addicted because it is super fun. So I have the resin here. The resin is a two part resin. This is almost gone. Um, an A and a B, and the A is the resin and the B is the resin hardener. And it's when you mix them together that you get the chemical process that makes it harden. So either one alone is just a sticky mess, but when you mix them together, um, they get hard. So I, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to clean off my space, get everything ready to go. I'm gonna put you on fast forward and I will talk you through each step of the process to creating this cute little coaster. All right, so I'm putting on my gloves, very, very important. And the first thing I'm going to do is mix up some resin. So I am going to use, it's very important that you have an equal one-to-one -one ratio. So I am using the measurements on the side of my silicone cup there to make sure that I get them exactly the same. And um, I didn't have them exactly the same, so I'm just fixing that here. And then I'm going to stir it. And you need to stir this. It's hard to see, but it is a little bit of a cloudy look when uh, it's not fully mixed together. You have to stir this for three to five minutes. And it's a long, you need, the slower you do it, the better because you will get less bubbles. It also helps if your resin is room temperature. I'm working in the basement, which is a little cooler. So I just uh, turned on my heat gun for a second while I was stirring to heat it up a little bit. You don't want to do it too close or for too long or else it will uh, affect the way that the resin hardens, but just make it so that it's room temperature. And if you need to, you can put it in a warm water bath uh, to bring it up to warm or to room temperature before you start. So here it is just about mixed. Again, I'm using a silicone coat coated stir stick there just because anytime I can I do that. I'm using some tape to get off any dust off of the mold and I'm just putting a little bit of clear resin in the center of the mold to start because I want the word, I, I've decided to do the word Noel, I want the word to be able to, um, I don't want it obstructed obscured by glitter or anything. So I just want the clear resin right on top of the word Noel. Um, I'm using some tweezers to help me place the letters. It's nice to have some tweezers handy to also get out any little bits of dust or things that might uh, fly into the mold as you're working. And then I'm just mixing some of the clear resin with that gorgeous glitter stirring it around till it's fully uh, mixed together. And then I am going to start by pouring this 
I like a lot of glitter. This actually, this time I added a little bit more glitter than I, I would have liked. Uh, it still turns out pretty in the end, but a little bit less will do you just fine. So I'm starting by pouring in the little uh, ridge of the outside of the mold and I'm kind of squishing it and making sure that there aren't bubbles. You can use a toothpick to help you pop any bubbles or bring any bubbles to the surface as well as a heat gun. Uh, you don't want to stay in one place too long with the heat gun. Uh, it will, you'll see it visually popping the bubbles though. Uh, and now I am just pouring in the rest of that glitter mixture there. And I want it to cover the word Noel. Uh, those letters are quite thick, but I want them to be um, fully covered. And so I'm just pouring in a little bit more. You can see how glittery that is. I think this would have been pretty just glitter too, actually. Uh, but you can use all sorts of different things to mix into your resin to make it however you like it. So you could do a color here, um, and we'll get into colors in just a minute. Uh, or you can do any sort of glitter, mica powder, little gems or beads. Uh, here I'm going to go ahead and add in these little sprinklets. So I'm just using a big craft stick to kind of dump those in. And I will do both kinds of the little sprinklets here. And then I'm going to use a toothpick to kind of push them around a little bit, spread them apart so that they're not all clumped together. And obviously this is optional. You can get as fussy as you want or you can make it just be totally freeform and chill. Um, I'm adding a little bit of these gold stars as well. And I think that those add a fun little touch to it. And then I'm going to use my heat gun again just to make sure I get out any bubbles. Now what we need to do is let this sit for a few hours because I'm going to do another layer on the back, but the, the front part needs to be set up enough that they don't mix together. So I let this sit for two or three hours uh, and did something else while it was setting up. I have some resin left because I wasn't thinking about this when I mixed my initial amount of resin. So I mixed a little too much. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is just, I have this little cone shape. You can see it, I'm pouring into it now. I have been pouring into this cone shape with all sorts of golds and clears and uh, white kinds of mixtures to create a little village for Christmas. I have a whole bunch of these now in different heights that are all gold, white, and clear so that I can have a, like a little Christmas tree forest sitting on one of the shelves on my bookcase in my living room. And so I am just making another one of those with my leftover resin. So never waste your resin. You can always use the rest of it to pour into another mold. If you have extra, you'll get the hang of about how much you need after working with it for a while, but it does take a bit. So here I've slowed it down a little just so you can see the prettiness of the clear and the white with the sparkles there. I just love it. So again, I'm gonna let this sit for a few hours and I will be back to pour the rest. Okay, so it's been a few hours. I'm back. I've already mixed up some more resin. Thought you might not want to see that. Um, I did mix up a little more than I need because I want to make some earrings as well. And I just, whenever I'm doing resin, I'll just make a little extra to throw into another mold sometimes. Or I often have extra because I'm bad at <laughs> figuring out how much I need. But, um, I am going to now take these cups and mix the different colors for the background. So on these first ones, you can see I did like red, gold, and white on this one. Um, on this one, I did white, and then I did a little bit of gold, and then red in the middle. So I'm going to do some combination of that for this one as well. And I'm just going to use the cups that I already used when I was mixing um, some other colors up. So I'll go ahead and get pouring. So I'm pouring a little bit of resin into each cup and then I'm going to use the, 
the pigments to add a few drops to each one to color it. And you can add more or less depending on how uh, dark or transparent you want the color. So you can just uh, put less to start with and then if you feel like it's not quite as deep or as uh, opaque as you want, just add a little bit more. So I'm just mixing up all three of those colors and then I've decided to pour red in the middle here and then I'm gonna do gold on the top and bottom of the red and then I'm gonna do white on the outside. So kind of like a little stripey thing going on here. Now a lot of this will, uh, it's, it's not super important that it's precisely clear they're going to mix together a little bit and it's just the background so it doesn't really matter too much but I am making sure to get out all of the bubbles it is ready to be set aside and I'm adding the bits of gold and white that I have left over to my little cone here because as I mentioned before those are the colors that I've been making my um little resin trees out of and then I just add a little bit of clear on top popping any bubbles that I can find. And then I'm going to bring out these earring molds. These are from uh, American Crafts Color Pour line as well. And I am just going to pour the leftover red into some of these earrings. It comes with two molds so that you can pour um, two at the same time so that you can get a good color match. And I'm just going to finish up with the red here. Um, using that even though red isn't a color I generally wear very often um, but I'm just putting it in there I'm using a toothpick to make sure I get out any bubbles because it is really easy to get bubbles in these tiny little molds and it makes a big difference so if you go especially around the little you can see on each one that there's a little piece of silicone poking up that's where the hole will form if you go around that with your toothpick, it's really helpful in releasing the bubbles that sometimes get trapped there. So now I have three smaller little um, cups here that I'm going to mix some colors in. So I've got some copper, some pink that I'm gonna mix with a little bit of orange to make a coral. And then um, it's called cream, but it's more of a mauve color and then this kind of teal color. So I'm putting a little bit of resin into each one of those and I'll mix those up. And these are going to be the colors that I use to create these resin earrings. And I thought these would be fun colors to kind of put together. You'll see at the end uh, when, I show, when I pull them out of the mold and show them to you um, how you can kind of play around with these different shapes. This is a really fun mold that you can get into uh, a lot and it's super fun. So I'm just gonna pour these different colors in and then I will come back and we will unmold our coaster. Okay, it has been 24 hours. I'm back here to um, unmold the coaster with you. I thought I would just show you really quick the earring pieces that I have. Um, these are really fun because you can combine them in lots of different ways to make different cute little earrings so like you could put this on top of this with this at the bottom or you know like little let's say we did this with maybe this hanging in the middle of it and this with maybe a smaller oh, that one doesn't fit anyway they all fit together in different ways um, I could stick that there with a circle at the top like that. Anyway, they're kind of fun. So I, I just wanted to show you those. Those were just, you know, with the leftover resin. Um, also, this leftover turned out awesome. Look at this shine. I love it so much. So I am creating a little forest of these trees. Um, that I've just been making using leftovers. I use gold and white a lot, so all of the trees are gold and white and clear. Um, and this is a fun one to add to my forest. This is, so I will display like a whole shelf full of these at Christmas and they're all different heights. So keep in mind that um, just because a mold is a certain height doesn't mean you have to fill it all the way. So this does have a few rough edges at the bottom, but I can just sand those down and it'll be just fine. So anyway, that's fun. 
but let's take a look at our coaster. So as you remember, I dried it with this box on top. I like this box because it has a hole for the fumes to escape, but it keeps dust off of it. So it's looking pretty shiny and pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and do this. I'm so excited to see it. It's always fun to unmold. Okay, so the back turned out cool. Aww. Ooh, look how sparkly that is. This is more sparkly than my other ones. I think I added more glitter. Look, I'll show you the difference. Yeah. And I used a different color of red. This is more of a pinky red and this is more of a deep red. Um, you don't see it quite as much, and that's fine. Like, everyone is different. I think it's super fun. How fun would this be to have on your desk or um, on your bedside table just during the holidays? Or you could make a bunch of these and stick them on your coffee table to use during the holidays. I think they're so fun. I cannot find these letters anymore, but you could use any letters. You could use chipboard letters, acetate letters, um, anything that you can find. So super, super fun. I hope that you enjoyed. Just let's give that glitter one more good look. Very pretty. Okay, if you wanna see more resin videos, let me know in the comments below. Um, also, uh, you can check out some other videos that I've got here. Um, and I hope to see you back here again soon. I'll be posting all sorts of crafty videos, resin, scrapbooking, all the things. So thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.